Cypress structure collapsed, and then uh, multiple deaths at the break of the Cypress structure. This is one of those situations that no doubt you will remember from now on. Of course, when they say, where were you on uh, this date when uh, the seven-point earthquake hit, you will immediately remember exactly what you're doing. And no doubt, many of you who live in California have felt earthquakes before. And when this one started, as we here at the studio did, we just said, oh, an earthquake. But then, as you felt it, it seemed to go on and on and on. Some uh, people estimated as long as a couple of minutes. Of course, it wasn't that long, but it was far longer than, uh, than the average earthquake. Now, what we're looking at now are people who were trapped. You're looking at two levels of the freeway. The, where that ladder is, that's the bottom level. And you see right on top of that in this dramatic footage, you can see where the top level that's normally 18 to 20, 25 feet above this road bed is now flat flush with the bottom level. Look at that's that's an amazing photo right there. We're getting reports, Dennis, right now that at Fifth and Townsend in San Francisco, five people are reported dead. That's five people dead at the Sixth and Townsend area of San Francisco. Uh, what happened, from what I understand, is a brick wall collapsed and trapped several people there. And uh, earlier, we didn't know the extent of, of, of the injuries there, but now we're hearing that five people are dead. Also, if you are one of the ones who uh, have been put out of your home because of the earthquake today and because of damage to your property, at Chestnut in Fillmore Middle School, it says they are now open uh, to take people in, you know, to give them a place to stay tonight. That's the Chestnut and Fillmore uh, Middle School at Chestnut and Fillmore. Now, what you're looking at, again, uh, we want to try to keep you up to date of what you're actually seeing as well as keep you up to date in areas where we don't have photographs, where we don't have videotape. Uh, as we told you earlier, there are reports. This is the Cypress Structure of Oakland. Now, there are reports that a half mile, possibly three quarters, up to a mile stretch of that elevated freeway has collapsed the upper deck straight down onto the lower deck there are people in cars now keep in mind this is at 504 that freeway was pretty crowded the lower level is the level that goes out toward the bay bridge so perhaps at that time of day there were not as many cars as there would have been had it been during the morning rush rush hour that way that the, that bottom level would have been bumper to bumper but as you can see it is flat flush down onto the bottom level and there are cars trapped in there we're told as many as 100 people may still be trapped in there screaming for help and these pictures were taken about uh, possibly an hour an hour and a half ago when it, you can see there's still light now the problem they're fighting now is darkness we know of course there's a power outage uh, they're trying to set up portable lights so they can uh, try to come up with some way to to help these people there are a few people who were lucky enough to you called it lucky to be in, a, in an area where rescuers could get to them but there are still an unknown number of people who are trapped under that collapsed section of freeway. We keep getting reports from all over the Bay Area as to the extent of the damage in Foster City. Uh, we're getting report that that area is okay. The damage does not seem to be very heavy. There are no fires. However, Highway 17 going into Santa Cruz, we have reports right now that that is closed. Los Gatos is cut off because Highway 17 is closed. Uh, that is close to the center of the quake, which was 10 miles northeast of Santa Cruz. And if you are just tuning in, the earthquake that hit at 504 this afternoon, look, just look the way that freeway buckled. Just almost a, a mile worth of buckling. You can see cars overturned, uh, many people trapped there, uh, extensive damage. The earthquake, according to UC Berkeley, measured seven points on the Richter scale uh, along the San Andreas Fault. 10 miles northeast of Santa Cruz, the biggest quake we have had here since 1952. Uh, because of the earthquake this afternoon, San Francisco International Airport was closed down immediately. Extensive damage there, not on the runways, but in the control tower. That will be closed at least until midnight, according to our last report. Uh, all flights have been redirected. As for other airports in the Bay Area, two runways at uh, Oakland are open. Hayward Airport is open. San Jose is open. As for the bridges around the Bay, the Golden Gate Bridge is okay at our last report. The San Mateo Bridge is closed. Dunbarton is okay. And as Dennis and I were reporting earlier, buildings have been down south of Market. There are fires on both sides of the Bay. The most... Uh, the, the worst fire is in the Marina District in San Francisco, where the fire department is having trouble finding enough water to fight it, and they're sort of watching that fire burn. 
Now, uh, again, we told you that uh, uh, an entire section of the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge collapsed during that powerful uh, earthquake this afternoon. You can see the bridge now is totally empty of traffic. And again, these pictures were taken about uh, 30, 35 minutes after the quake struck. The Coast Guard, uh, some National Guardsmen, uh, boats in the water, trying to facilitate a rescue. Several cars, as you can see, were trapped by the edge of that concrete slab of the bridge as it came crashing down. Other cars came screeching to a halt. The problem then, of course, was getting people off the bridge because that section of bridge collapsed in front of them. They couldn't just keep going and get off the bridge. Cars had to be backed off the bridge. And I would imagine there were some shaky thoughts at the time, especially the people who managed to stop their cars before they got to that section, wondering if more structural damage was going to occur. And in, in by looking at these pictures, it is amazing that, that we didn't get reports of cars in the water, uh, of, of more uh, injuries by looking at the extent There's, there's no damage. way this bridge is going to be repaired in two days. Now, I mean, that's, that's what they're saying, but that's you totally can imagine... Out of, that's totally out of the question. Yeah. With, with major damage such as that, uh, I, don't, I don't see how that's possible. That, I, I imagine they'll mount a, uh, an effort to, to, because that's a, a major artery between the East Bay and the West Bay, but uh, it'll, it'll take inspections and a lot of repair work before that bridge is, is open to traffic. Let me quickly bring you up to date of what else is happening because of this earthquake. Uh, of course, uh, as it would happen, right, uh, moments before the, uh, the third game of the World Series, Series was set to get away out of Candlestick Park, no doubt, as you might have guessed by now, that has been canceled. That has, that has been put on hold. Um, uh, there was a little confusion out there for a while before the fans finally realized that uh, this game, of course, was not going to go on. They had no power out there. They had no way of telling people that the, that the, uh, the game was not going to go on. What we're looking at now is one of the other major problems uh, in San Francisco. That's uh, a huge fire that, uh, that erupted in the area of... Uh, Beach Street, Jefferson, and Divisadero near uh, near the San Francisco Marina. And as Elaine was saying, uh, what they they ran out of water pressure or something. Or they had right. They were using water from the um, I think it was the Palace of Fine Arts, mm -hmm. and uh, for some reason they they lost uh, uh, water. And uh, now they're just watching it burn at this hour. We are hearing reports that Marin is very fortunate by comparison to the rest of the Bay Area. They just didn't get the damage that the rest of the Bay Area got. Lieutenant Governor Leo McCarthy was at Candlestick tonight. Uh, the governor is in Frankfurt, so as we understand it, the lieutenant governor is now acting governor. Well, the older buildings that weren't as structurally sound, or depending on uh, just how they were situated, we don't know all the ins and outs of it yet, or why the build, there was a building that collapsed in the, in the area of that fire, why it collapsed, and why others around it didn't, or why just that one section of the Bay Bridge uh, uh, collapsed and other sections didn't, or why that section of, uh, of the Cypress collapsed. In Oakland, uh, about uh, two or three miles south of the Cypress, there's another elevated uh, section of, of 880, and uh, as far as we know, there's been uh, no major damage to that area. So in a situation like this, why some areas uh, suffer structural damage and collapse, major damage, and, and, and others don't, it, we, we just don't know. And Marin apparently got very lucky. There are very little damage reported so far in Marin. Uh, the California National Guard is on alert. Uh, President Bush has been advised of the situation. He has told emergency services to swing into action. He was advised about 30 minutes ago. There you see the smoke again from uh, the several fires that have broken out in San Francisco. And like Dennis said, of course, this is not anywhere near the 1906 earthquake. Uh, that was an eight point uh, on the Richter scale. This was a seven. Uh, this is the it was worst. Estimated 8.9. .9. There was no Richter scale then, but uh, using computers and right. so forth, they, they estimated, estimated about 8.9. And this is a seven. And uh, this uh, Very caused powerful, though, so. Oh, it, it, so violent that it buckled streets in the uh, area around the downtown Embarcadero Center. It was the kind of earthquake that knocked you off your feet. I can't ever remember an earthquake doing that. Sometimes an earthquake will happen, you'll run underneath a, a door jam. Mm -hmm. This was an earthquake that literally knocked you off your feet. It was that violent. I'm sure a lot of people realize that. Now, one other thing you should realize and, uh, and be prepared for, there is a good chance that there will be more aftershocks as, uh, as time goes on, either later tonight or tomorrow. Uh, just be prepared for them mentally, and, and uh, something like this could be very frightening. So, um, don't don't let the the feel of an aftershock to, when it starts shaking again 
don't let that panic you into doing something that uh, you perhaps shouldn't do. And the other thing we should remind you is that what we're, we're seeing and talking about uh, the events that have happened in our immediate area. This earthquake was felt uh, over an area of four, six hundred miles. So, and it was centered near Santa Cruz. We aren't getting a lot of information in from Santa Cruz right now, simply because of the nature of the thing. So there could be uh, more problems, you know, in that area that we haven't gotten to yet. But before this night is over, we will touch on as much of it as we can. Dennis, uh, Oakland police are saying now that rescue efforts are still continuing at the Cypress structure. People are still trapped in their cars. We say no more volunteers are needed there, however. Uh, there, you're looking at it right now. People still trapped in their cars. Earthquake happened at, uh, three hours ago, and they're still trapped there. Uh, other than that, though, there are uh, major, no other major police problems in Oakland. Lots of glass on the roads in Oakland near the toll plaza area. Uh, driving is extremely hazardous, of course. There are no lights. The intersection of 680 and 24 is reported to be open, but only one lane in some directions. Uh, everything is supposedly under control in Oakland, as of our last report. San Jose said they need doctors desperately, and if you are a doctor, please report to a hospital in San Jose. The magnitude of the earthquake is still being reported at 7.0. Well, this picture here shows us something different. This, is, this again, is the cypress structure, and, and what it looks like here, it, it appears as if as if both sections of the freeway have collapsed all the way to the ground. Mm -hmm. We were just now, getting reports that the top had the, fallen onto the bottom We just heard that, that the top had fallen onto the bottom structure. Now, that you can see there, that's where the top has fallen onto the bottom structure, but what we saw in the, in the previous uh, view was it appeared as if both structures had fallen, and uh, that, that would, again, be extremely devastating, because then you have not only the, the cars involved on both levels of the freeway, but uh, cars or pedestrians who were under the freeway. That right. probably could account for... We heard earlier that there were four deaths uh, on, on the street level there around the Cypress structure, and then perhaps at least 10 more at, at where the actual break happened. And you can just look at the devastation there. We have never seen anything like this. We've had big earthquakes in the Bay Area. There's been some shaking, people report. Uh, almost with a little laughter that the buildings are swaying uh, and then they all talk about where they were but never uh, since 1952 have we had anything like this the size of this earthquake uh, it was along the San Andreas fault and the epicenter was uh, 10 miles northeast of Santa Cruz and in Hollister the city of Hollister was reporting major damage several buildings down and this is an earthquake that was felt uh, all over uh, it stretched for miles. Mayor Agnos is now saying that that fire in the Marina District is under control. That was that big fire we saw earlier. Uh, these pictures, of course, were taken uh, earlier this evening, but rescue efforts, as we said a little earlier, are still going on at the Cypress structure. People are still trapped in their cars. Uh, but they are saying there are enough volunteers, please do not come out there. And as Dennis was saying earlier, uh, you're being asked to stay in your homes, uh, to stay off the telephone, uh, to not go out and look at the damage, because more problems are created that way. We want to pass along also uh, from uh, AC Transit. They've let us know that they are rerouting <clears throat> excuse me, as many buses as possible to BART stations and along the regular routes. They're gonna to try to cover some of the regular routes. And uh, of course, uh, with the, the Bay Bridge out of service, AC Transit will be ferrying passengers to and from San Francisco via the San Rafael Bridge and via the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, we don't, that's a dramatic photo there. I was right, the, uh, the entire elevated section of the freeway apparently came down. It wasn't just, in some places, it wasn't just the top section that came down and was held up by the bottom section. In some cases, it came down like a house of cards, I guess you would say. And some of the cars that were uh, traveling the streets of Oakland beneath those were, were literally turned into pancakes. What do you have? Well, unfortunately, because of the size of this earthquake throughout the evening, we'll be bringing you news, and, and some of it is not going to be very good, and I don't have very good news to bring you right now. The Santa Cruz uh, Fire Department is reporting there are several fires burning at Ford's department store in Santa Cruz. Apparently, a wall has collapsed in the basement. There are reports of fatalities. Uh, I am getting another report that says there are two confirmed dead in the city. 
And I don't know if that is the, uh, re regarding the fatalities at the Ford's department store. Uh, a building collapsed in the Pacific Garden Mall, also in the Santa Cruz area. Roads are closed in various areas of the mountains. Emergency personnel is spread very thin tonight. No fires, though, are reported in Gilroy. No fires in Morgan Hill. The Valley Fair Mall in San Jose, the Emporium, had a fire earlier, but that is now out. And in San Jose, a roof collapsed at the Almaden Market. But I guess that the worst right now is that uh, wall collapsing at Ford's department store and reports of fatalities there. And as soon as we have more information, we'll bring that to you. Okay. Now, we told you earlier that uh, they had a problem with BART, that... Uh they, of course, shut down power for a while, and then they were running inspection trains. Uh, we talked with uh, the publicist out at uh, uh, Bay Area Rapid Transit District. That would be Simon Over, and we have, that, we have what he told us right now. All of the traction power, that is the power that runs the trains, is down. PG&E feed to us is not working. Therefore, we have no, tr no service in San Francisco. As a matter of fact, none of the trains in any part of the system are running in revenue service. We do have some trains out there that are running in inspections for both track and structures. We have engineers making uh, structure inspections to make sure that, the, well, that there's been no major damage. So far, we're getting back reports that sound fairly reasonable, but uh, we're not complete yet, and will take us another hour. It looks like we'll be restoring power in about an hour to the Concord line. It is from MacArthur to Rock Ridge and then on out uh, in Contra Costa County to uh, the uh, sea line, as we call it, up to up to station of Concord. <clears throat> the next uh, portion of the true district that would open up is probably the Richmond line. Uh, the A line is going to take us a little longer because of, the, of some of the complicated power problems. Uh, that would probably be an hour and a half to two hours away. <clears throat> I have absolutely no idea as to when we're going to get power back in San Francisco. What, what was happening? Uh, where were your trains when the quake hit? It was on regular service. We were right in the middle of the commute. And so we had a lot of trains out there, at least 45. We had one train stop in the Transbay 2, just outside of Embarcadero Station. It was going towards Embarcadero. Uh, the procedure on BART is that if we have an earthquake of this severity, all trains stop. And then they will move towards the nearest station. Some of them will even go in reverse to get back to the station they just departed. Some will go forward. Once you've gotten trains back into stations, then we disembark all the uh, passengers and have them clear the station. Now, we have in place a bus bridge, as it's called. We're using the uh, CCCTA uh, buses going from MacArthur to Rockridge and then on out to the Concord Line stations and back again. <clears throat> they may be coming back to MacArthur, but that's as far as we can take them right now. AC Transit on all of their lines, and remember, they had all of their service out at the same time as in the commute, is accepting BART transfers from BART stations on the lines that parallel our service. Uh, uh, it's getting, it keeps the folks moving, but they're not too happy. We have absolutely no report of any uh, injuries. Uh, uh, no, they were, they were scared as we were here in this building. This building shook pretty good. I'm on, the fourth, I'm on the first floor of this building, and I can imagine what my colleagues were going through on the fifth floor, because if it was bad as we were on the first, it must have been pretty rotten up top. Now, what about tomorrow, since the Bay Bridge may still be closed tomorrow? What do you think <clears throat> about Trans Bay service? Right now, our concern is today's service. I've asked that same question of our transportation people, and uh, I think they are more concerned about what we're going to do today. Once we, have, once we know the system has its integrity and it has not lost its engineering or construction integrity or the rail alignment, and once we know that we can get power, then we'll make a decision just what kind of service we'll be running tomorrow. Now, the latest word I have about BART's service tomorrow is that the picture looks good. Uh, they may even have limited service running within the next hour. Right now, only inspection trains are running. Their problem, of course, is power outages. They, they say, really, it is too early to tell, though, about tomorrow. Okay, now, we've been telling you about uh, the Cypress structure in Oakland that has collapsed uh, about a mile, half mile forward. We have a reporter live on the scene right now. Let's go to Leslie Griffith. And Leslie, that looks horrible behind you. Dennis, my guess would be it's more like about a mile. It's from about 7th Street in Oakland. Oakland all the way to the Bay Bridge split. The, the uh, freeway in every area, either the entire 
top deck of the freeway has fallen down or either there is structural damage. Now, what you're looking at now is a live picture of just one of several different rescue crews in this area. The crews are everywhere up and down this freeway, and they are just searching frantically for people who may still be inside. We are told that there are AC transit buses out here, and the AC transit buses are next to the freeway, and they are putting bodies inside those AC transit buses. Now, as you look at this scene, you can tell that the upper deck, apparently, as the cars were working their way home, uh, the upper deck just fell down on top of the lower deck. And at this hour, there are numerous fatalities, we are told, and, uh, Police, every every conceivable agency, every conceivable emergency crew is here right now. Uh, they're asking for volunteers. Apparently, we were told a little while ago that uh, they did have quite a few volunteers, and people were just getting in the way of each other out here. But what they're asking for now are things like ladders. If you happen to have a big ladder, they need something like that. They are hoping that, of course. Uh, the fatalities that they don't find as many people as they expect, but if you can imagine there was bumper to bumper traffic traffic here when this earthquake hit. People, uh, there are cars all inside. We could see smoke coming from between the two decks. When we came out here earlier in the afternoon, 30 minutes, 40 minutes after this happened, the cars were on fire. We were told uh, by certain emergency crews that they could, um, that they could hear people screaming for help inside. And at this hour, emergency crews are all up and down this area. I'm just going to let you look at this picture for a moment. Um, person walking right now apparently has been stuck there since 5 o'clock this afternoon. And we are told that that person is still alive, the person who is between these two decks. Uh, I was just handed a note saying that, yes, there is a person who is still alive. And, of course, you can imagine the families waiting to hear their, uh, you know, I, I, dozens of cars. I, I have no idea how many cars were between these two decks, but uh, you can imagine the families who are waiting to hear from their loved ones at this hour. I have seen double-deck trucks. I don't know the video that you're looking at right now. Yo, you're still looking at the live shot, but I've seen uh, big Mack trucks. Uh, that have just been crushed just as flat as you can imagine in here and and several cars have fallen down from the lower deck they've fallen down and caught fire uh, it has just been a very chaotic scene i did happen to i did happen to talk to one man who survived this mayhem and he came out and he said that he, he heard all kinds of cries. He heard all kinds of screaming. He felt things shaking. And he, uh, apparently, officials got to him in his car. He was still alive because his car was next to a big Mack truck that held up an area of this freeway. So that man was one of the lucky ones. Now, we did walk along here earlier. We were one of the first crews on the scene. We're being told to back up right now, so we'll do that. They're bringing a fire truck in. Hopefully, they'll be able to get this man out of here. We were here, as I was saying, at about uh, 545, and one of the first crews out here, and we could see that there were bodies. They had bodies on the side, uh, just on the sidewalk here, outside these Oakland neighborhoods, and we're back live now. We want to show you what's going on. What we're hoping now is that uh, they're starting to move fire trucks in. We see a lot of emergency crews moving around in this area. And what we're hoping is we've got our fingers crossed that maybe this person will be okay when they bring him out. And I know it's hard to believe as you look at this that someone could still be alive inside there. But uh, there's another area, all of this area that's so flat like this, we have seen them pull people out of. So there's a possibility that there are still survivors, and, and, and that's what we're hoping for. Um, again, we were told that AC Transit had a couple of buses, I want to be real careful about how I say that because we were told buses, plural, that had bodies out here. Uh, we're hoping that that is an exaggeration at this point. And uh, as we said, we were told that this person in here now that they're going for, and we don't know if this is a family or if this is one person, but we are told that there is someone alive right here. So Dennis and Elaine, at this point, this is just a horror story. It's the worst you can imagine. And I know that everybody's been talking about 
where they were when this earthquake struck. I was on my way to the game this afternoon, and we, of course, heard about this, and it's just, uh, it's worse than you can imagine out here. I've never seen anything like this. So we will keep you uh, in touch with what's going on, and we'll let you know, of course, if they are able to pull this person out of here alive, and we'll let you know if we get any firm figures on anything. At this point, we have not been able to. All right, Leslie, we'll be coming back with you as soon as you have some more information for us. Thank you very much for that live report. That was Leslie Griffith reporting live. We are getting a report now. At least 50 people are dead tonight because of this earthquake. And the White House has sent an Air Force plane to get Governor Duke Majin. He is in Germany right now. And the State Office of Emergency Services is starting to coordinate the uh, response from state agencies. State engineering experts are on their way to the Bay Bridge to assess the damage there. Um, once again, at least uh, 50 people are reported uh, dead tonight because of this earthquake and uh, Dennis and I have just gotten our wire services uh, we haven't been able to have use of that because of our power outages and wire services are not coming in with other reports well we're told uh, that uh, this earthquake today was measured at between 6.5 and 7 on the Richter scale that was uh, by the Caltech people down in Pasadena as we said uh, UC Berkeley had problems with it because uh, it was uh, uh, so close and so strong. We're told that uh, the epicenter was along the San Andreas Fault between San Jose and Santa Cruz, about 40 miles uh, north of Hollister, north, uh, northeast of Hollister. We're told now that the state capital in Sacramento has been evacuated uh, because of fear that uh, there could be some structural problems there. The Coliseum and Candlestick Park will have to be inspected because there is a possibility that uh, they may not be structurally sound enough to resume the World Series. There is a possibility that this will mean the World Series will have to be moved somewhere else. We're also told that uh, a 6.5 to 7 uh, magnitude earthquake, as was measured uh, by Caltech, uh, is considered a major earthquake that could cause very widespread damage, and that this quake is equal to the Armenian earthquake that took place uh, December 7th, 1988, and we're told that that earthquake killed 55,000 people. We don't expect, of course, uh, the casualty level to be anywhere near that high, but as Elaine mentioned, we're at least up to 50 people confirmed dead so far. Right. And most of those deaths apparently took place uh, on the, the collapse of the, um, the Cypress structure. Then there were about six people, they believe, that were killed uh, in San Francisco when a brick building collapsed. Now, that was, uh, I think, at 6th and Townsend. Uh, you're getting a, a, about 50 people dead because of today's earthquake. And those reports are just coming in now. Uh, we have no idea if there will be more deaths uh, as the evening goes on. When Dennis was talking about Candlestick, I uh, just got a report, an eyewitness said, uh, the upper deck just shook like a leaf and there was such a, a big crack uh, at part of Candlestick that they could see right through to the parking lot. And so they don't know whether they'll be able to, you know, continue the game there or not. Now, what you're probably going to be seeing for the next few days um, will be a lot of amateur video that, uh, you know, when people first see something like this, the first thing they do is they grab their video cameras and run out and get it. And we have some of that in Berkeley. We showed it to you a little while ago of an auto body shop in Berkeley, one of the the uh, major events that took place in, Ber in Berkeley uh, after this uh, major earthquake. Um, an auto body shop uh, near downtown Berkeley that, that erupted in flames. Uh, we understand that now is pretty close to being under control. But you're going to be seeing scenes like this uh, for the next few days. I'm quite sure uh, there are, there's a lot more video out there just like this where people grab their home video cameras no doubt we'll be seeing more on the, on the cypress structure, as uh, Mark Abanez told us earlier that uh, uh, he saw a lot of people running around with their home video cameras as soon as, uh, as soon as that situation happened. So a lot of this is going to start showing up in the air. You're probably going to be seeing some dramatic footage of what went on when this earthquake struck. And people are starting now to talk about what happened, how fires started, how they felt when the quake uh, hit. We have some eyewitness accounts right now that we'd like to take a look at. I had just walked out of the shop. And just like it's just the, from the earthquake, it just went. I mean, you know, what can we say? It's more upsetting than anything, you know. I'm worried about my drivers. My drivers is what I worry about. At least everybody's okay. Can you describe what happened? The earthquake. I mean, it just went. The power line, the power line went, the transformer went, and it started a fire inside. The drivers were out. One guy tried to save the trucks, and he tried very hard. He's very brave. His name is Jay. 
and then the fire started. It was a direct result of a power surge from the transformer on the hill, and it just went in, and there was nothing they could do to stop it. Again, those were okay. some uh, accounts of uh, eyewitness accounts. The city of San Francisco is in darkness tonight. The power is out. There are no lights there. Some muggings and lootings have now been reported. And if you are trying to get from San Francisco to Oakland, uh, the Red and White Fleet is offering rides from the San Francisco Ferry Building to Jack London Square. Now Hornblower Yachts are offering uh, free rides at Pier 33 to Jack London Square and also Pier 40 to 42. Uh, they're offering Hornblower Yachts and Red and White Fleet are offering free rides to get you from one place to the other. Now, uh, the question comes up, what happens in an event, a major event such as this, what happens when it strikes San Francisco? Who is in charge? What do they do? What happens next? Um, it's ironic, just last week I was out talking to uh, the director of the Office of Emergency Services in San Francisco to, to try to get an idea of what you should do as an individual and who takes over, who looks out for us. Let's hear what he has to say now. In the event of a major disaster, and of course in our area, we would probably be talking about a, an earthquake. Are we in trouble? Well, I would have to say that's a loaded question. Yes, and, uh, I don't know what you mean by trouble. There are uh, varied uh, systems uh, that are at a better level than other systems. You know, but uh, we could be in trouble. You know, if if one looked because of the of the closures of bridges, the failures of uh, transportation systems, road failures, lifeline failures. You know, uh, utilities out. If if one wants to categorize that as troubles, well, yeah, that is it. We would be uh, have a definite need for search and rescue teams. Uh, and that would uh, entail bringing in people, you know, uh, as quickly as possible. So we could very well, you know, be in difficulty there because of, of shortfall of available people. We'd probably have to rely upon volunteer people, much like they did in Mexico City, and I'm sure they did, you know, elsewhere or they do elsewhere. But then we would have to turn to the state and identify the specific needs for San Francisco in the way of personnel, firefighters or police p uh, personnel and things of this nature nature, as well as heavy equipment. If we're talking about something in the San Francisco area uh, of an event that's truly catastrophic, where, mm -hmm. you know, uh, roads are blocked, phone lines are down, uh, just general chaos, how long would it take? I would say it probably would take no longer than the, than the uh, governor of the state picking up the telephone and calling the president and telling him what had happened and asking for a disaster declaration and it would be done immediately. Do we have stockpiles? Does FEMA have stockpiles of, of uh, emergency supplies that would be used for the public? Do you have stockpiles like no, that? No, we do not. Um, we do not. Do you have stockpiles of emergency supplies that would be used by uh, other agencies? Um, if you mean, uh, do other agencies have stockpiles? No, no. Does, uh, does FEMA? No. FEMA does not have stockpile of equipment. Correct. Yes. And in, in that case, what then do, do you do? 72 hours after an earthquake, we are basically on our own. Uh, so there's a list and we will give you that list very shortly there's a there's a list of items that you there's a list of items that you should have after an emergency such as that the two gentlemen that you that you just saw one was from the federal emergency management agency the other one's from the office of emergency services in san francisco they are telling us that in the event of such a disaster such as we just had now for the first 72 hours we are basically on our own. We should have at least 72 hours worth of stockpiles in each and every home, such as uh, canned, uh, bottled water, canned goods, uh, dry goods, emergency medical supplies. These things we should have in our home. That was the purpose of, of us uh, showing the videotape that, uh, that we just show, showed you. And we will uh, bring you more from both those gentlemen as we go on in the evening. Okay? And I guess you, you know very well when a situation like this happens, we were knocked off the air for an hour and a half, lost our power immediately after the earthquake, and we became, went on emergency generators in order to bring you um, this portion of information that we can bring you. But I want to remind you, President Bush has now sent an Air Force plane to pick up Governor... Thing right now, you see a rescue helicopter there in the foreground on the deck of the Bay Bridge. This is the section of the Bay Bridge that collapsed. Uh, this structural damage, as dramatic as it looks, is obviously not as serious as the SIPA structure, um, but what this will do to life in the Bay Area for the next week or two 
I, I hesitate to even guess. Um, do you have any figures on how many vehicles were trapped there? No, we don't, Randy. The, the last week, you coming on the bridge? On the Bay Bridge, yes. Uh, on the bridge there, we, we could see at least two vehicles trapped by that falling section, but of course we can't tell how many, how many there were. Okay, now this is that fire on Jefferson Street in the Marina District of San Francisco. Uh, we are told it's a large apartment building that was burning. Buildings adjacent to it collapsed. Perhaps you can see in the background on the upper left-hand corner of your screen, there is a building collapsed there. There were many buildings like that in the area uh, that also had collapsed. Uh, we were told for a time the fire department actually lost water power, and they had to bring in fire boats and, that docked at the marina, at the uh, yacht club there near the marina green, and they ran hoses from the site of the fire several blocks along the streets to the fire boats, and they had to rely on volunteers. They didn't have enough fire personnel to uh, lay the hose that long distance, and they had to rely on volunteers, people uh, in that area, to carry the hose and bring it from the fire boats in the marina district to that fire in that apartment building. Again, in the blocks near that area, uh, from the air, there appeared to be at least four or five large apartment buildings that had uh, collapsed. So, Randy, throughout the evening, you'll be coming back and bringing us updated information? Absolutely. Okay, yes. thank you very much. We have some updated information. We're finding out now that the death toll has now gone over 50. Uh, earlier, we were talking to you about a, a wall collapsing at a department store in Santa Cruz. Well, now we find out the California Highway Patrol says six people were killed uh, in the collapse of part of the City Garden Mall in uh, Santa Cruz. So. There's uh, an estimated about 40 dead on the Cypress structure, uh, six dead at uh, 6th and Townsend in San Francisco, and now we're hearing uh, six were killed in, uh, in Santa Cruz. And uh, this is early in the evening, and uh, the death toll um, could go even. So I don't think there's anything we can really tell you more. Leave it alone. Do not Bay Area Earthquake uh, represents the Bay Area Earthquake Preparedness Project, and he's joining us to talk to us about what we can do in this situation and what is being done right now. Mr. Bertunio, can you hear me? If they could help. Generally, it's been pretty calm. Now, you say you've had uh, folks say that they will come in and help you. What will you need to make it through tonight? We're doing pretty well right now. Um, our hospital it was uh, redesigned a few years ago to be seismically safe, and we've had no structural damage. So um, it, it is a crisis, but um, we're, we're actually doing pretty well. Okay, you say no structural damage to no. Children's Hospital, but uh, no. how, how big is the building and what are you surrounded by? Give us an idea of what you can see maybe outside. Well, we're, we're a seven-story building and um, we're pretty solid. I can't see anything outside right now except cars going by because it is pitch black. I did drive over the Golden Gate Bridge uh, a little earlier today back into the city and you could see the huge fire in the marina with um, billowing smoke. It, it didn't even look real and I guess they're having trouble pumping uh, water into that. But the marina is quite close to the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, I understand people are outside a lot. They're just kind of wandering around and people are, um, some people are in a daze. We've had a couple of parents show up here at the hospital who've been unable to uh, find their children at daycare and they're a little worried, so mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it was a very scary quake. Mm -hmm. And it, were you on duty when the quake happened? Yes, I, as a matter of fact, I was at my office in a three-story building a little way from the hospital. I'm from the Midwest and uh, have lived out here about seven years and have all really found the other uh, minor quakes we've had kind of interesting because I knew I wasn't going to get hurt. But when this thing hit, it, I heard it. I heard the roar before we felt the tremor and then when it hit it was violent it knocked things off desk people fell we all hit under the desks and uh some folks were telling it was scary it just did not stop it was the longest 15 seconds or so in my life i really did not think we were going to get through Ann Hagelin, we thank you very much for joining us. Ann Hagelin from Children's Hospital in San Francisco. Patrick. All right, we're going to take a look now at some amateur video that uh, we have uh, gotten, um, gotten a hold of here, uh, shot by uh, a, a resident. Uh, you can, my gosh, that's just amazing video. You can actually see that car going along. This is on the, uh, that was on the Bay. Okay, all right, we're going to take another look at that. That was on the Bay Bridge and... Uh, if, uh, if uh, what I recollect from uh, driving that bridge a number of times, 
Look at this car now. Watch that car. That's just incredible. Can you imagine the fear that would go through those people? That bridge is several hundred feet uh, above the surface of the uh, San Francisco Bay. I mean, I, 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 can't, I can't even begin to fathom what that feeling must have been like. It's incredible. Amateur video uh, from San Francisco. We're going to take a break right now, and we will continue with our special report on the devastation in the San Francisco Bay area this afternoon. Back after this. The bridges uh, actually that are open, the Golden Gate Bridge is open, the Richmond Bridge is open, Dumbarton, Carquinas, Benicia, and Antioch Bridges are all open at this point. And that's good news because immediately following the earthquake, uh, the report we had was all bridges were closed. Then we finally found that they began to open them up as they found out they were safe. The Golden Gate Bridge began to uh, move traffic again, and now those other bridges you just mentioned. We got uh, the roads closed here, Mac, as we were mentioning, Highway 17, Highway 9 to Santa Cruz. Interstate 280, Highway 85 to Magdalena is closed, and Highway 37 at the Napa River. So we're talking about some damage up there as far north into Napa. Right. San Francisco International closed to all traffic incoming and outgoing, and at last report, San Jose Airport was receiving traffic, but only of an emergency nature. San Jose International, emergencies only at this point. And only landings. And uh, Oakland International, it indicates, is open right now. Yes, it's, uh, it's interesting. Their main runway, runway 29, is built out on fill over the bay, so it had the potential for buckling. Mm -hmm. uh, but apparently it must be okay. The same thing for San Francisco. The, uh, the two westerly runways uh, are built out over the bay. Those are the ones that keep closing to straighten out. They keep warping just because of the, national, or the natural tidal action. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure they want to thoroughly check them out now that there's been this major, sure. uh, major earthquake. The uh, the earthquake is uh, information continues to come in. You, you, they gave you this microphone just for you, Ian. Yeah. You've Thank been you, yes. and you know if you do one more of these, you have to join the union. <laughs> this is an update from the uh, Red Cross, and we want to get this out as uh, soon as we can. Absolutely. We have a uh, number for people to call who would like to get information on uh, uh, emergency service from the Red Cross. I think we have that number uh, put on the screen, but I'll read it for you now. It's uh, 776. 1500. There it is. There and you go. That's a 415 area code number for people who uh, would like information or assistance from the Red Cross. Again, that number is 776 1500. Uh, that's in the 415 area code. And we do have an update uh, to add here from the Red Cross that uh, shelters have now been set up in San Francisco at the Moscone Center and at the Marina Middle School. Uh, of course, the Marina Middle School, that shelter is set up, set up uh, primarily to uh, help people who uh, are uh, affected by the big fire in that area, which is now under control. It really is amazing, uh, always to me, when there's uh, an emergency like this, how fast, even though they're trained to do it, how fast the Red Cross uh, can respond and how we can depend on them. Mayor Art Agnes standing by live right now to talk to us. Mayor, tell us where you sit. Uh, how, what kind of shape is the city in right now? Oh, he's I don't think he can hear us from, from what I see there. Can you hear us now, Mayor? Yeah. All right, you were just being grilled by the press a little while ago. What else can you tell us? What's the latest information you have? Yeah. It looks like we're having a few technical problems of setting up this interview with the mayor. Mayor Art Agnes, are you hearing us? Yes, I can now. Okay, and what does the situation look like in the city to you? The situation right now? in uh, San Francisco is that we're in good shape. We have done a survey throughout the city, and while we still have power that is out, the water lines are operational, our hospitals are fully operational, our police and fire are fully operational. In fact, we have extra personnel coming back on duty as we speak. We've got over 150 extra firefighters should anything break out. We just successfully closed down a very serious major fire involving 12 buildings in the marina part of our city. Uh, there were three fatalities there. There were another five fatalities in another part of the city when a building fell on some people in a car, I believe. Uh, but those are the only fatalities we have to date. Uh, we have all of our police district stations, all nine, are fully operational, fully manned, with extra personnel arriving every hour to supplement those on duty to make sure that the streets are orderly. Uh, we have uh, very, very minimal reports of a couple of uh, incidences of vandalism. The biggest problem we have right now 
is uh, uh, traffic uh, trying to leave the city to the north and to the south. Obviously, to the east, with the Bay Bridge shut down, that's not possible. And so we're having some serious problems trying to get the highway patrol is uh, helping us. The Army at the Presidio is giving us some extra personnel so that they can supplement. And troops, I understand, were being brought in from Fort Ord? Uh, I, no, no troops that I know of from We Fort had one Ord. report of that earlier could be. I have not received that information here at the command post. However, we have been talking to General Harrison at uh, Presidio, and he's doing a survey now. However, I must uh, re-emphasize that we have all of the regular shifts of both the police and fire on duty, our ambulances. We've had a high number of runs, and we've gotten some mutual aid from uh, San Mateo and from uh, Marin County. So that is also under control. In short, everything in the city is under control. Uh, people should remain calm. Those who are on the street um, in their cars should try to return home using side streets so that we can use the main arteries to get people out of the city. I'm asking all San Franciscans to cooperate with their mayor and with all of us to uh, help each other out to ease the kind of anxiety that's inevitably a part of this kind of situation. But I want to assure everybody that everything is under control. All of the vital systems of the city are up and running except for electricity, which is being worked on as we speak. Tomorrow, the schools will not be open. The superintendent of schools, Mr. Cortinas, and I and others have decided that they should be shut down because of uh, we don't know what kind of shape the school buildings are. We've also summoned all city building inspectors and engineers to report to the Army Street offices immediately right now so that they can begin throughout the night to check and examine all buildings to see if there have been any kind of defects or structural defects that might make them unsafe for workers in the morning. In, in the meantime, we're asking people not to come to work tomorrow in uh, the downtown area until they check first to see that their building is open and transportation is available. Right now, it's not. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you, uh, your city services train for the big one all the time, and this is the biggest one in a long time. Uh, your evaluation of your, your response team? Well, so far, we, I'm very proud of our response. We've successfully battled fires. We've successfully had police on duty throughout the city, and everything is up and running. Uh, this was a pretty serious one. It was uh, somewhere around seven uh, points, they tell me, on the Richter scale. That's right. So um, I'm very proud of uh, this city and the response that we've had to date, and I'm very proud of the citizens of San Francisco for re rising to the occasion and not uh, panicking and not res uh, resorting to any kind of violence. Mayor, let me ask you a couple of other things. What kind of word are you getting, uh, first of all, from the hospitals in terms of the numbers injured? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're, you're, you're sort of breaking in and out. The number of injured? Uh, do you have any figures from the hospitals at this point? Well, we've had about 100 uh, walking wounded, I'm sorry, 100 ambulance runs, which is an extraordinary high number uh, since 504 when the earthquake hit. Uh, about 25 of those uh, 100 ambulance runs were uh, what they term to be very serious, although no fatalities reported from those yet. How about the walking wounded you mentioned? Well, there have been unconfirmed reports of large numbers of people walking in who may have had some some injuries, not serious, but uh, from falling glass or things like that. Again, our computers are not working, so these reports are coming to me here at the command post by uh, hand count and verbal uh, observation. I mean, verbal reports and from visual observations. Okay, let me ask another thing. You mentioned that you're getting some support help from other cities. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't hear the, I can't hear. Can you hear me right now if I'm talking like this? If no. I move my mic up, are you not hearing me? I'm sorry, I can't hear the Can email. you hear Dave? Here yes. we go, right now. Can, now, can you hear me, Mayor? Yeah. Okay, great. Let me ask you this. Uh, you mentioned that you're getting help from other cities. That's helpful to us because that tells us which areas have not been hit hard by the quake. Can you tell us again which areas are sending you well, supplementary we, help? Yeah, we got, uh, we received uh, uh, mutual aid in our ambulance service uh, from San Mateo County and from Marin. Um, and as I took a helicopter tour of the city about an hour ago with uh, supervisors Hongisto and Maher, um, we saw, and the police chief and others, uh, we saw that most of the Bay Area, at least in terms of power, was uh, well lit up. And only San Francisco seems to be down at this point. So you, you would say the, uh, the northwest and, and peninsula and south Bay Area still have power? 
Yes, I, as I took a helicopter tour, I saw that the entire Bay Area, as we swung around uh, the perimeter of San Francisco, I saw that uh, most of the Bay Area is well lit and seemed to be its normal lighting power, although I didn't go up close to them. Can I, can I, can we use you as a reporter for a second, Mayor, and ask you what you are hearing from some of the other areas that have been hard hit, like in Oakland? Have you been getting any late word from there? I'm sorry, I'm losing you on, again. Uh, Wendy is asking you to become a reporter for a moment and tell us what you've learned about about uh, damage to the uh, East Bay uh, and other areas as they check in with you at your well, emergency center. Uh, we know of, we've had no reports uh, from uh, the East Bay or any other parts of uh, the Bay Area. Um, all we've gotten so far is, as I said, mutual aid from San Mateo. Uh, when I was in the helicopter and was over uh, the northern part of Daly City, that seemed to be pretty normal, except for the high amount of traffic trying to go through it uh, to get to the peninsula and uh, point south as well as the problems of trying to get over the Golden Gate Bridge, which is fully functional, um, going north. Uh, Mr. Mayor, a lot has been uh, made in some circles of the fact that uh, San Francisco is one of the few major cities that really doesn't have a heliport, uh, the Fisherman's Wharf heliport being shut down, for instance. Do you have a different feeling about the role a heliport would uh, play in San Francisco now well, that you've been, been through we've this been emergency? Looking, we've, had, uh, we've had a heliport right here at the command headquarters in the playground. Uh, there are other emergency spots that we can use. We've been talking to the uh, San Francisco General Hospital trying to uh, see if we can put one there for emergency use th around the year. Um, but we'll take another look at it when this is over. All right, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. You're welcome. And now we're going to go to, uh, is it Santa Clara Water District? That's I what they said in my ear, Santa they Clara might be Water able District. To, uh, give us some information there about if you live in that area, what we should do to be careful and whatnot. Now, is this a, a phone interview or is this. Okay. Hello? Is this. Are we talking to Santa Clara Water Department? Yes, sir. Uh, and who is this? This is Teddy Morris at the Public Information Office. And what do you have to share with us? to do is let residents know that are treated by our Rinconado water treatment plant or receiving water from our Santa Teresa water treatment plant that both plants are down and that the residents will lose water tonight so they need to fill water with containers with water while they can limit toilet flushing and showers and so on until we can get them back online which hopefully tonight we'll be able to do that but there's no guarantees Penny, let me go back and confirm with you where we the areas that we are talking about that have no water are you talking about the entire county of santa clara so just the residents serviced by our rinconada water treatment plant in los gatos and our santa Teresa water treatment plant in south san jose most residences know if they're getting the water from those plants the big water companies would be San Jose Water Company. If you're being serviced by them, you're going to probably lose your water tonight. Uh, city of Cupertino, most of that city will lose their water tonight as long as we're down. Any other cities that need to be warned right now? You're talking about South San Jose, Los Gatos, Cupertino, and what else? Uh, part of Santa Clara may have a problem, part of Sunnyvale. Those would be the major ones that are serviced by those two water treatment plants. Sarah, Any idea when they'll come back online and water will be restored? W when we get the pipe, the pipe repairs done, but that could be a while. Uh, Santa Teresa will probably be the first one we can fix. Rinconada has quite a bit of damage, so we're not sure. There's actually plant structural damage at Rinconada. Can you repeat the advice for people who are not going to have water, what they should do? Okay, they should fill containers with the potable drinking water now so that they'll have it during the night. Avoid toilet flushing and showers and that sort of thing as much as they can. Okay, so these people have water now, but it's going to go off. That's the situation. They, they probably still have some water in the system now, but it is going to be going off. And what, it'll just taper off, or are you t going to turn it off? We've already shut it off. It just takes a while for the uh, water in the system to reach each individual home before it's shut off. All right, well, thank you very much for that report from Santa Clara Water. Uh, off now to Lauren Nancaro in our weather office. Lauren. Mac, just a couple of things to add at this point. Uh, one of them, we uh, reported just a little while earlier that in Santa Cruz, six people had died at a mall. There had been a collapse there, uh, very near the epicenter of the earthquake. We are now told that that is the Garden Mall, the City Garden Mall, I'm sorry, in the city of Santa Cruz. Also, out in the East Bay, in Contra Costa County right now, the 680-24 interchange is closed. There's no apparent damage right now, but the uh, Caltrans folks believe it's uh, better safe than sorry. They're uh, 
checking all the elevated structures there to make sure that that roadway is safe. So Highway 680 and 24 interchange closed, although the two highways leading up to that point are open. Uh, Brian Sussman is here in the weather office, and he has late information. Brian. I'm arranging a phone interview right now with uh, a top earthquake expert in the area so we can get more information as to what happened and what still might happen. From what I ascertain from talking with this gentleman, uh, aftershocks which are occurring will continue to occur for the next 48 to 72 hours in the Bay Area. And again, there is that chance, statistically maybe a 10 to 20 percent chance, that we could see an aftershock that would be as strong as the 7.0 earthquake that hit at 5.04 local time. If you weren't with us earlier in the broadcast, this is a piece of paper off our seismograph here in the Weather Center. You can see the lines. These would be normal lines that would be prescribed during the course of a regular day. The little tick marks indicate one minute. Here's what happened at 5.04. The seismograph essentially went off the chart. This is a graphic illustration of what a 7.0 earthquake looks like. Also, we're going to be getting on the line soon, if we don't already. Uh, no, we do not. We'll be talking with somebody, my grandmother, who survived the 1906 quake. It's interesting to get her comparisons between this quake, and she does live in Santa Cruz, by the way, and the one that occurred in 1906. Other information, we've had a lot of calls into the Weather Center talking about earthquake weather. Today was a hot day, very little wind. People want to know if there's a relationship between weather and earthquakes. And again, the pure scientific answer on that is that there is no association or correlation between weather and earthquakes. Again, that's the latest we have right now. As soon as I can get those interviews set up with our expert and my grandmother, Mac and Wendy, we'll get that for you. I consider your grandmother an expert. I think so, too. <laughs> yes. Uh, Watsonville, the word there is that the community hospital has been evacuated in Watsonville as a precaution. The patients have been moved to several other hospitals. Apparently the patients are all right, but just to be on the safe side, they've been moved out of community hospital in Watsonville. Here's another interesting but unconfirmed report that the CHP uh, is reporting that mud and water are seeping up through the roadway at the toll plaza at the Bay Bridge. They apparently gave this word to CBS, is, is what we heard. It sounds so, like liquefaction is making its, uh, is raising its ugly head. Well, it's, yeah, who knows what it means right now, but at any rate, they've got uh, crews on their way there to figure out exactly what that does mean. Um, as the mayor mentioned earlier, or San Francisco's mayor, uh, they are calling in extra police and fire uh, fighters in the city to go on double duty. Um, they're pulling in people from San Mateo and, and Marin uh, as support help. Um, and as you pointed out, it was encouraging that they had, were able to get mutual response <clears throat> from those areas. San Mateo, for instance, we've had reports of uh, damage at uh, the 92 interchange, the Hillsdale Mall. Uh, if, uh, it, it, I guess if you're looking for a bright note, it's the fact that they could spare people to come up and help us Right, it means San that the damage isn't too bad in we those hope. areas, we hope. Yeah, in San Mateo or in Marin, that's, that's what the indication is there. I had also heard a report earlier that Highland Hospital was calling in all of its um, doctors, and obviously um, Highland is the hospital that is going to have to deal with the uh, 50 people that we have now confirmed dead at the Cypress section of 880 there in Oakland, which continues to be the, uh, well, has suffered the worst damage in terms of fatalities. And there are people who did survive. We saw some, some people being taken from the scene, and uh, probably they are at Highland right now. Mm -hmm. uh, everything's all right with you, your family? Yeah. I, I couldn't talk to them while I was out at Candlestick. So the first thing I did when I got back here was to call and make sure they were okay. Oh, yes. Well, you can imagine how I felt. My uh, daughter works at Hillsdale Mall in an office in a basement nearby, and I was suddenly handed a piece of paper that said that the third floor at the mall had collapsed. And that's very cryptic. That's all it said. We didn't know what the, and still don't know what all the extent of the damage is. But it was, uh, it was a long time until I finally got word that she's okay. Yeah, she's okay. All the kids checked in. They're all okay. <laughs> that's good. And that's they good. said, we it's see nice you on TV, so news. we know you're, you're okay. okay. Let's go through the, uh, the fatality numbers again. Yeah, for the and, people who are not. Right, and this is an accumulation of numbers that we're getting both from the lieutenant governor's office and also uh, the mayor of San Francisco had an update on the number of dead in San Francisco when we were just listening to him. Uh, again, 50 people are now reported dead um, in the Cypress uh, 880 incident, uh, the collapse of the freeway there. Um, eight dead in San Francisco. 
and I believe that three of those fatalities were in the Marina District in that fire. Five fatalities in another part of the city. And the mayor I think the five may be a, sure have been in the warehouse that collapsed. He said some people in a car and something had fallen on it, but he wasn't even clear on uh, where those fatalities had occurred. And two people that we have uh, we know dead now in the Bay Bridge, and of course the upper deck of the Bay Bridge collapsed onto the lower deck. And I think we're talking about. Did you see the a problem? It's going to continue for some time from that because I don't know how we're going to deal with the traffic from that in months to come as they're, as they're fixing. Well, it. it's just it's closed. That's it. Yeah. Both both decks. Uh, did you see the video that the, <clears throat> the man from Oklahoma shot, showing the cars? They were waved on. They drove right off the edge and mm -hmm. down. Uh, it's incredible. We'll be showing it, I'm sure, again later on. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is that uh, that home video camera has now become so uh, widespread through our communities that mm -hmm. we start getting these uh, video tapes back to to cover where we uh, we don't happen to be. Mm -hmm. uh, he had just come here with his wife from Oklahoma on a vacation to San Francisco. What a welcome, reception. Welcome to San Francisco. Welcome to San Francisco. Well, he said as long as he's alive and his wife's okay, that's as, as much welcome as he wants. We should run through some of the... Um some of the alerts that we've had from uh, different from the water district, for example, uh, we had uh, a, a, a warning coming in, or not a warning, but a notice coming in from the Santa Clara uh, water district that uh, people in parts of South San Jose, Las Gatas, Cupertino, and parts of Santa Clara and Sunnyvale as well will not have water later on tonight. Um, so they are telling people to fill your containers right now and store that water because you are not going to be having uh, water later on tonight. And uh, let's let's go, uh, oh, we have a report here. San Francisco State closed tomorrow. No major damage reported, but on, to be on the safe side, they want to check everything out before they resume classes. And we've got uh, a number of road reports here, and I'm uh, just trying to go through them and see uh, the 101 at 3rd Avenue, which is one of the older, uh, one of the original uh, overpasses when they built the Bayshore Freeway. Uh, there, a major overpa uh, overpass damage there at 3rd Avenue. Uh, San Mateo Bridges, we've been saying, and closed all night. Uh, in Palo Alto, University Avenue at Palo Alto, dropped onto a 101, the section of the roadway there, and so it's closed mm -hmm. right now. And uh, so oh, it goes. Here, look at this, Dave. Help us out here. Yes, the bridge is closed, Visual the Bay Bridge. Reinforcement here. Yeah, Bay Bridge uh, and the San Mateo Bridge closed. The San Mateo Bridge is closed overnight while they check the pilings. There's been, they think, some damage to the pilings of, uh, in that bridge. Uh, open, have uh, been checked out and appear to be just fine. Golden Gate Bridge, now, that was the first bridge to come back online. Then Richmond Bridge, Dumbarton Bridge, Carquinas, Benicia, Polo and Benicia, they call it Benicia, the Benicia, Benicia Bridge and the Antioch Bridge are now open to traffic. Here you can see on your screen the roads uh, that are closed that we know about at this point. Interstate 8... Uh, uh, just east of the cantilever section and... Uh, so that means that the Bay Bridge, the main artery between the East and West Bay, is going to be closed for quite some time. Uh, we have uh, the latest on that warehouse fire in San Francisco. The mayor has told us that five people died at 6th and Bluxem, the uh, fire and collapsed building. So and that was not a car, uh, as, as I had been saying. Or well, the we had a, we had a had picture had of a really car that was crushed uh -huh. uh, by some rubble, but it's hard to sort, sort it all out because we've had so many things uh, happening at once and coming in. It's very con very confusing. Uh, but, but as far as we know, it was a collapsed building and fire at 6th and Bluxham. Mm -hmm. And you see an uh, injured person being taken away there. Now, about uh, Interstate 880, the accident that really has, has just saddened the Bay Area, 50 people, Wendy, you said, have died in the, this upper deck, dead now. crashing down on the lower deck. Uh, this is at Cyprus, at the Cyprus uh, area. See, it just looks like a sandwich that has, has right. collapsed there. And uh, as they take this person away, here comes a, an eyewitness to the accident. Get him out, okay? We have one woman who's unconscious, bleeding from the head. She is breathing. She's got a pulse. They have cars and trucks that are smashed completely. They got a lot of, I believe they got a lot of dead bodies up there, you know. Because well, the trucks, there. yeah, there's a few, a lot of people alive. There's a lot of confusion up there. There's a lot of people in there, there's just trap cars. They can't move or nothing like that. We done pulled out a few people out of here, and what they're doing is they're trying to, low, I, I guess, try to uh, open up the cars with those, those things and get them out. They're not going to get them out without mega heavy okay. equipment. I don't so know. It's going to be probably a while. It's going to be a long time. Bye.
It's going to be a long night for a lot of people, and especially the people trying to uh, save as many lives as they can here. The last report, 50 dead at the uh, Interstate 80 uh, freeway on the lower deck at uh, Cyprus. We've just received word from Treasure Island from the Navy there asking all military personnel to report for duty. All, not just the Navy, but all military personnel. If you're uh, on leave and liberty, uh, off duty, you're urged to report back immediately or as soon as you can to your duty station. I think the way that the picture is shaping up right now is that the major damage, uh, the, the biggest incident, of course, is, is the collapse of the freeway right now in terms of fatalities at 880. Um, you could see it. It looked like it just was sandwiched, and there are cars smashed in between. Um, I know the early reports were that civilians were actually going in and helping the emergency crews try to get as many people out. Again, 50 people um, have died in that accident. Uh, so in Oakland, uh, in addition to that, we're, the city is entirely blackened right now there's no power there's some minor looting going on at least three dozen people have been admitted to hospitals for injuries in the east bay uh, we also have a, a lot of problems in san francisco uh, with the marina fire and uh, at this point let's see we're talking about how many dead in san francisco i'll look well, it up here it must be eight, eight because the total uh, right. is 58 so far right. uh well two on the bridge six uh, blocks them, uh, it was five, five in that warehouse and three in the marina fire. We just received three of the uh, World Series between the Giants and the A's. That, of course, did not happen. We now don't know if it's going to happen in the Bay Area. Uh, this is what the stadium looked like virtually moments before the earthquake struck. Uh, there were festivities on the field. The parking lot was crowded uh, A's and Giants banners everywhere people were getting ready for game three the eight the Giants were down two games to none and uh, their first day in the in their in their stadiums their first World Series game in their stadium since 1962 and this is what happened a massive earthquake which now puts into doubt whether or not they will ever again uh, play a baseball game at candlestick and this may make moot proposition P on the San Francisco ballot. If, uh, if that's ruled to be uh, structurally unsound, uh, this, could, this could get very interesting. We were just getting information on that. There has been specific structural damage to Candlestick, uh, a 29-year-old ballpark. Apparently, there was a, a section of the upper deck in right field uh, that separated by about six inches. And people mm -hmm. said when they were sitting in the upper stands that uh, they could see the parking lot you know, through when it, it separated, and they said it just shook like a leaf. And it, at first, everyone thought, well, this is just a regular quake, and isn't this funny? Mm -hmm. And then when they realized how severe the earthquake was, everybody started leaving, but it was very orderly. The ball players went out in the middle of the field, uh, not sure what was going on, and I everybody just started... I think if I had a chance, uh, I would go to the middle of the I field. I think that was a good place <laughs> to be, yes. But they, they left, and it was very orderly uh, as people were trying to get home, find out. Okay, let's go to Leslie Griffith now. She's standing by... Uh, Faith Fancher, I'm sorry, Faith is standing by uh, in Oakland uh, in the area of uh, the Cypress structure that collapsed. Faith? Yes, Dennis, I'm at 24th and Cypress. We just had a dramatic rescue here not 20 minutes ago. They pulled a man out of this alive. They had been working on this structure trying to get this man out since the earthquake. He had been trapped. His name was Tim. He was in a Navy truck. They worked on him. There were volunteers here the chp was here they bought in the fremont fire department everybody worked together to get this man out they pulled him out not 20 minutes ago one of the chp officers who was in on that rescue is with me now and you are my name is officer jim goodman and tell me about the rescue how difficult was it what did you have to do well initially when we first found him it was about uh it was about a half an hour after the earthquake and the structure was still falling, so we chalked it and used uh, large jacks to keep it from falling down any further. And through perseverance and persistence, we got him out. Um, he was caught underneath the steering wheel. When the structure fell, he was off to the right side. That's the only thing that helped him survive. What kind of shape was he in? Did he talk with you? He was He was great. Um, he was uh, he was doing really well. He, he was very responsive. He, uh, he did really well. We, he was in a lot of pain. He lost a lot of blood, but he's alive. What was trapping him? 
the uh, his his right leg was underneath the dash, and that's what was preventing him from being extracted. Uh, we cut the seat, pulled the stuffing out from under the seat, cut the cut the uh, springs out from the seat to help him drop down. And the fire guys were just incredible. They're the ones that uh, I would say did the 98 percent of the job. Okay, you've been out here for hours. Tell me, are there other people trapped there, bodies? Give me some idea of the scene. We've gone the entire length of the span, but we did not see any anybody that is alive at this point. Were you able to count how many bodies are still trapped up there? I have no idea. Parts of the structure that run across the, the width of the road it sometimes is on top of the uh, uh, interior component of the car, so there's no way to tell. Faith, this is Dennis. Thank you very much. Faith, yes. this is Dennis. Would you ask the officer or, or anyone you can, what are the possibilities of more rescues of, of uh, people surviving uh, such a catastrophe out there? Dennis is asking what are the possibilities of other survivors still trapped in this structure? The fire department and the highway patrol, police department, everybody has been combing the entire Cypress section to make sure that there are no, no other people that are alive still in their cars. We've, we've crawled underneath each one and checked each car to make sure if there is any possibility that they would be alive. And you found no one else? We found nobody at this time that, they're, Faith, if, that, are, that they're alive. Faith, if he found no one alive, uh, can you give us an idea of, of what the casualty uh, number might be that uh, they found up there. Another question from Dennis Richmond. Can you give us an idea of the number of casualties that are there? Casualties, no. Automobiles, yes. Uh, I counted personally from this point to the 80 split, um, approximately 15 cars. Number of occupants, there's no way to tell. Uh, Faith? Yes, Elaine. We have gotten reports that at least 53 people have been confirmed dead. At some point, can you talk with somebody out there and see if that kind of figure is what you're getting there or if it is indeed even higher or, or lower? Yes, we will try, Elaine. I have been trying to get some kind of figure on the casualties. And at the command post that is several blocks up, I talked with uh, one of the firefighters who was out there, and he said, right now, your guess is as good as mine. He said they're getting reports in all the time. So that number sounds reasonable. It may be higher than that. At the time that I talked with him, I had heard about 20 confirmed dead, and he said the number would go even higher than that. There was one other dramatic rescue out here, I might add. So we have seen two people pulled out of this disaster alive. Dennis Elaine, that's the latest. Back to you. Right. Thanks very much, Faith. And uh, what you're looking at right now is a scene of, of, of that rescue earlier tonight at the Cypress structure. And as Faith talked about earlier, it, it's just a mess out there and there's no way to know um, exactly what the death toll will be. Our latest figure is 53 confirmed dead out there and uh, could go even higher than that. Uh, we want to uh, alert anyone who is homeless tonight because of the fire in the marina that the marina middle school is open to go there and they will take care of you tonight uh, we also want to update you on the roads around the bay area that are open or closed the um, golden gate bridge is open the san mateo bridge is open dunbarton bridge is open the richmond san rafael bridge and the carquinez bridge all of these are open highway 280 at 85 is closed in the south bay 101 northbound at candlestick is closed and uh, earlier tonight, traffic was just bumper to bumper in the North Peninsula. Lights are out. The people are trying to get from one place to another. And as Dennis and I were telling you earlier, if you do not have to go out of your house tonight, you're being advised to stay in, stay off the phone. And uh, it only complicates matters when you go out and try to get someplace. Okay, Elaine, uh, we're told that we have on the phone right as, with us right now uh, Henry Renteria. Mr. Renteria, are you there? Yes. Uh, Mr. Renteria is with the Oakland Office of Emergency Services. What is your office doing right now to uh, uh, try to facilitate uh, rescues or ease this situation? Right now we are trying to get an idea of what is happening throughout the city. We have located that our major source of damage is the, the Cypress 18th Street uh, freeway collapse. That is the major uh, concentration for our response teams right now. We have opened up a triage center and a shelter. Uh, we are sending... Um, crews out there to help with the rescue attempt. The rest of the city looks like there has been some structural damage to buildings. We don't know of any other major structural um, uh, edifices that have fallen. 
or any of the other injuries. The majority of our, our work right now is concentrated at the freeway. Mr. Ventaria, it's my understanding the way OAS works is that uh, you, will, you will work to your limitations first and uh, then if you find that it's beyond your limitations, you will call in state help. Uh, is, is that a situation right now? or uh, it, We have declared a local emergency. We did that at five, between 5 and 5.30 this afternoon when the earthquake hit. The local emergency has been declared. We are in contact with the county OES. They are funneling our request onto the state. And uh, from the state, we go to, uh, federal. to the federal, to FEMA. Correct. Um, is this going to take time? Are we going to have? We're going to see a lot of bureaucratic paperwork here, or, or we're going to see some uh, some action from from these other uh, uh, domino uh, emergency services agencies immediately? I, I we're seeing some immediate action right now from our county. I, I can tell you that. Uh, I'm not in contact with the state, so I don't know what's happening on the state level. Mm -hmm. But from the county, we are being in direct contact with them, and we are having some response from there now. What What is your biggest need right now? I know it's right in the area of the of the. Uh, um, uh, Cypress structure, but what right now is, is your biggest need that you can't handle? Right now our biggest need is cooperation from the public. We need the public to remain calm. We need the public to, to be patient. I know a lot of people are, were caught in traffic. They're not home yet. They're worried about where their loved ones are. We will be gathering as much information as possible. They should stay tuned to the radio and TV fits to get information. They should not be calling 911 unless it's an emergency. They should not be calling us down here for information because we don't have it right now uh, unless it is an emergency. There will be information posted at the shelters as far as where the people who are there have been located and where they will be located. But right now, we don't have that information. Well, what is it you're asking for the state from the state, Mr. Venteria? Right now, uh, we are assessing the need for heavy rescue equipment. We're assessing the need for um, uh, food and water, et cetera. But I don't, we, we don't have those, that, um, uh, those figures right now. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you very much for taking time out to talk with us. We know you must be very busy down there. Yeah, was, uh, thank you. Mr. Henry Renteria, he is with the Oakland Office of Emergency Services, and uh, I imagine uh, uh, very quickly, uh, as you mentioned before, uh, President Bush uh, left the meeting, went back to the White House, and uh, I would imagine very shortly uh, this area will be declared a federal disaster. I'm sure area. it will. We want to update you now. This information just coming in. Within two days, it's according to Caltrans, they hope to have the bridge open temporarily, the Bay Bridge open to traffic. What they plan on doing is they plan on clearing the debris from the upper deck of the bridge. And, and what they want to do is just um, make a, a sort of temporary gap, put a, a temporary steel girder where part of the top of the bridge fell down to the lower part of the bridge. So they hope within two days that they can open the Bay Bridge to some traffic. Now, as, as you saw some of the pictures earlier, the damage is quite extensive. Uh, perhaps that's an optimistic figure. Uh, we'll, we'll know um, pretty soon. We want to update you also on some of the roads that are also closed at this hour. Um, Highway 580 uh, East is open. That's through Oakland towards Castro Valley. Um, Highway 880 through San Leandro is open, but Highway 17 south of Los Gatos, that is closed. BART is shut down, as we talked about earlier, and yeah, Highway yeah, yeah. 80 to Sacramento uh, is open. The schools tomorrow, that will be closed. Oakland, San Francisco, Palo Alto, Akalani's Unified School Districts, all of these schools will be closed tomorrow. San Francisco State University is closed. UC Berkeley, though, will be open. Uh, the San Mateo County Emergency Center is in operation, and uh, so far they have reported 109 injuries in San Mateo County, but no deaths have been reported in that county. Um, all major San Mateo County facilities have uh, checked in, and there doesn't seem to be any serious damage. We've also heard that Marin County made out uh, pretty well in this earthquake, not a lot of damage there. There. Um, all 20 cities in San Mateo County are now in contact with the emergency center, and like I say, none of them report any major damage. Most county employees in San Mateo, uh, and this is strictly San Mateo County, most of these employees are not going to report to work tomorrow. Employees are asked to check by phone. Uh, call this number, and I will repeat this number a little later if you don't have time to write it down. If you're an employee in San Mateo County, call 363-4791. That's extension 1295, 363 4791, extension 1295, if you're an employee in San Mateo County, and call that number to, to find out if you should be going into work or not. Dennis, what do you have? Okay, there are major power outages uh, still in uh, several areas of the Bay Area. We have on the phone with us now Marilyn Davin. Ms. Davin, are you there? Yes, I'm here. She's with uh, PG&E and hopefully can give us some guidance as to what to expect so far as restoring power and what we should do if we don't have it. 
Can you tell us what uh, what we should expect, uh, Ms. Davin, right now insofar as uh, uh, PG&E restoring power? Okay. As far as the, uh, the homes are concerned, of course, if you do suspect that there is gas leaking or can smell it, it is very important to turn it off um, at the line that goes into your house. In terms of overall electrical outages, we have now restored power to about 25% of customers in San Francisco. This has just happened a few minutes ago. And so power is being restored basically in a northerly fashion. There is now power south of Lincoln and 14th. And we will we'll be coming up toward the downtown, picking up power as we go along. Ms. Davin, uh, can you explain to folks that are watching now, when people are, are told, well, if you smell gas, turn it off, that oftentimes they don't know exactly how to do that. Can you give a little specifics there on directions? Well, there is usually a line that is located outside your house, and sometimes it is inside the house. I mean, it's different depending on where you, uh, you live. It's very hard to generalize. It depends on the age of the building and so on. But there should be a gas valve, and um, if you can hear it or smell it, this is why odorant is put in the gas, that should be turned off. Do you have any basic, immediate advice that you can give to people right now? On um, what aspect? Well, I would certainly say that as far as the restoration of electricity, we still have between half a million and a million customers out, primarily San Francisco, south to Hollister, close to where the epicenter is. So um, we've called in all available crews who are getting here by any way that they can with the transportation problems, and we are picking up uh, power even as we speak. So we're trying to do it as best we can. How about in the East Bay and the South Bay, Ms. Davin? Uh, how many customers do, do we still have out there, and what can they in expect in terms of getting their power back on? Well, the East Bay, relative to what has happened to San Francisco, San Mateo, and South to Hollister, has been relatively lightly hit. We have had some scattered outages, nothing major like we have seen over on this side. And so, uh, and of course, many hard-hit areas are closer to the epicenter south of San Jose, and we still do not have a lot of information on exactly what is happening there. Okay, Marilyn Davin from Pacific Gas and Electric, thank you for taking time out to keep us informed. Thank uh, you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Call anytime. Um, we will, of course, uh, uh, continue uh, trying to update you on what you, on what you should and uh, should not do uh, uh, during this situation so far as, uh, as emergency services and uh, your PG&E and your electrical power and everything. And George Watson is standing by right now in San Francisco where they took the brunt of this earthquake today. George. Uh, Dennis and Elaine, I, I can only describe the situation here as nightmarish. The entire city, at least the part of the city that I have been in all day, is completely blacked out. There are no traffic lights. Uh, civilians, if you were, are trying to direct traffic. People are wandering the streets aimlessly. It is, it is a horrible, sickening feeling to be in the city. I could only advise people to not come here under any circumstances. Earlier today, I was at Candlestick Park when it hit, but at the same time, a fire broke out in the Marina District, and let's show you some of the tape of what happened. I understand we don't have any tape yet. On the drive here from Candlestick Park, across all the way across the city to the Golden Gate Bridge, took us about an hour and a half. Traffic is at a standstill. The city is in gridlock. I think, I, I hate to paint a dire picture, but it's the kind of scenario where you see looting happen, happening sometime in the night, especially without power. It is crucial that the city get power back. Uh, if, we, if we have the tape, I'll give you briefly what I know about the fire that happened in the Marina District. Apparently, it consumed several apartment buildings in an area around Divisadero and Beach Street. Do we have that picture yet? No, we do not. Again, getting back to the city, on Market Street, on 8th and Market, it was like another world. People were just wandering about with dazed looks on their faces. The homeless people were sort of coming out, and you could tell they were homeless. They were carrying their bags of all their belongings. And it's funny because everyone's equal now. There is a common denominator. The city is stricken, and, and it is truly horrible out there. And I don't know if I can find the words to describe it. George, you're saying that the street is just gridlock streets all over San Francisco? Just people are, have they been abandoning their cars and getting out and walking? No, I think, that, I think the realization is that I don't think panic has set in, but it's moving along inch by inch by inch. We got off the freeway from 101 because it was obvious we weren't going to get anywhere and took surface streets, which were pretty bad, but better than the freeway. The freeway is just this wall of non-moving lights, and this was from Candlestick Park. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about what happened at Candlestick. When it hit, uh, Willie Key and I were on the, this like mezzanine on the third floor, a uh, uh, third level of the, of the park, and it hit and it shook, 
and then and then it shook I, my vision felt blurred it wasn't my vision it was the stadium concrete rocking back and forth and 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 it was it was amazing to be there but there was no panic no one seemed to be upset at least not where we were i, I understand we have tape of the, the roaring fire that happened down in the, the marina district today let's take a look at that if we can it's 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 hard to believe it has to be reminiscent of what happened in 1906 when fire did most of the damage to the city here of course we did have we have water power in 6 1906 they did not